Welcome to episode 471 of the Selling Your Screenplay podcast. I'm Ashley Scott Myers, screenwriter and blogger over at sellingyourscreenplay.com. Today I am interviewing Canadian writer-director Jason Eisner, who's done a number of horror and thriller films over the years. His latest film is a cool horror sci-fi film called Kids vs. Aliens. We talk through his career, this film, working with children actors, and how he got this film produced. So stay tuned for that interview. SYS's six-figure screenplay contest is open for submissions. Just go to www.sellingyourscreenplay.com slash contest. Our early bird deadline is March 31st, so if your script is ready, definitely submit now to save some money. We're looking for the best low-budget shorts and feature film screenplays, defining low-budget as less than six figures. In other words, this screenplay could be produced for less than one million U.S. dollars. We've got lots of industry judges reading scripts in the later rounds. We've got, we're giving away thousands in cash and prizes. We've had a number of options and sales from the contest, and this is um, only our fourth year, so we're getting a nice bit of traction from these from these scripts with these producers. There's always lots of producers looking for high quality, low budget films. So I think we found a nice niche for this contest. We have a short film script category as well, 30 pages or less. So if you have a low budget short script, by all means, submit that. If you want to submit or learn more about the contest or check out some of our industry judges, just go to sellingyourscreenplay.com slash contest. If you find this episode valuable, please help me out by giving me a review in iTunes or leaving a comment on YouTube or retweeting the podcast on Twitter or liking or sharing it on Facebook. These social media shares really do help spread word about the podcast, so they're very much appreciated. Any websites or links that I mentioned in the podcast can be found on my blog in the show notes. I also publish a transcript with every episode in case you'd rather read the show or look at something later on. You can find all the podcast show notes at www.sellingyourscreenplay.com slash podcast. And then just look for episode number 471. If you want my free guide, how to sell a screenplay in five weeks, you can pick that up by going to sellingyourscreenplay.com slash guide. It's completely free. You just put in your email address and I'll send you a new lesson once per week for five weeks along with a bunch of bonus lessons. Teach the whole process of how to sell your screenplay in that guide. Teach you how to write a professional logline and query letter and how to find agents, managers, and producers who are looking for material. Really is everything you need to know to sell your screenplay. Just go to sellingyourscreenplay.com slash guide. So just a quick few words about what I'm working on. Still plugging away on this NFT project for the Rideshare Killer. I'm just slowly contacting a lot of crypto blogs and crypto podcasts and pitching this as a news story for their audience, pitching me as a guest on their podcast. Um, I actually spent some time writing some articles on this project and, and having those articles published. We wrote a press release, so that press release has been published in a few places. I mentioned this last time, but the reception I'm getting from the crypto community is actually much warmer than the filmmaking community and frankly I, I think this gives me a lot of encouragement because the crypto folks understand movies a lot more than the filmmakers understand crypto one of the guys um, that runs a crypto podcast that interviewed me um, he was talking about his favorite movie was was super bad and he was very much he sort of put it together and he's like wow I would love to own a frame an nft frame from super bad and again he really understands crypto and nfts so he could sort of see the value in this whole things. So as I said, it's giving me some sort of encouragement to kind of keep going and, and just keep pushing away at this. If you have any interest in checking some of this out, just Google the Rideshare Killer NFTs and a whole bunch of these articles will come up and you can kind of just see what the progress looks like. So that's good. As I said, I'm getting a lot of these articles published. And as I said, I've been interviewed on two podcasts, um, but it's just quite time consuming, just, you know, getting all the contact information and then reaching out and frankly, just emailing back and forth with these folks. Um, you know, a lot of times they want money up front to be published in the article we're doing this and you know it's a low budget film so we have no budget for this so there's just there's a lot of back and forth with these folks um and i've given away some of the frames of the film as you know in lieu of payment um some of the the, the crypto blogs have been willing to take some frames from the film um and then publish our press release and that sort of stuff so again it's just it's slow going time consuming but um i am making some headway slowly just plugging away on this so that's the main thing I've been working on the last week or two. Now let's get into the main segment. Today I am interviewing Canadian writer-director Jason Eisner. Here is the interview. Welcome, Jason, to the Selling Your Screenplay podcast. I really appreciate you coming on the show with me today. Yeah, thank you so much for having me. So to start out, maybe you can tell us a little bit about your background. Where did you grow up and how did you get interested in the entertainment business? Oh, gosh. It's a, it, yeah, it's a long story. I'll try to make it short. But <laughs> I grew up in uh, Dartmouth, Nova Scotia, Canada. 
very far away from the world of Hollywood and <laughs> movie making. Mm -hmm. um, but the way I guess I, I, I first picked up a camera uh, was through skateboarding. I grew up skateboarding and I wanted to film me and my friends skating. And um, one summer, me and my best friend, uh, Jermaine Arsenault, we like we took over uh, my parents' backyard shed. And he introduced me to like all these horror movies I've never heard of, like Return of the Living Dead and the Evil Dead movies. And we spent all summer uh, just living in that shed and just like renting out every horror movie, sci-fi movie from the local video store. And then when we weren't skateboarding, I just like would start filming little shorts like with my friends. And by the time I got to high school, uh, I was convincing like every teacher I could because I, I struggled with academics and but I could visually like um, get my point across. So I was like film, making every project a film. And then the, my high school actually had had noticed me and my friends running around with a video camera. So they developed a film and video program by the time I got to the 12th grade. And they had a teacher who is uh, still probably the most like influential person in my life and probably helped set me down a path and gave me the confidence was my high school film and uh, video teacher who was also the art teacher of the school and he had never taught a film and video class but he was just one of those guys that like a great teacher who um like i would see kids in class like try to get a rise out of him by drawing like offensive stuff mm -hmm. and he would come by and he would see it and he would pick out like all these like amazing things in it and i would watch him leave like a kid and they'd be kind of perplexed and or maybe were inspired um and uh so he never pushed his own artistic uh artistic aesthetic on us he just tried to get into what we were into and mm -hmm. help to try and get us inspired to to dive into it more so uh he helped me apply to a community college uh which was a it was called the screen arts program at the Nova Scotia Community College, which was like a two year program where they like taught you how to do everything in the film industry because it's like a trade school. So they like taught you how to grip, gaff, produce, AD, script supervise. Mm -hmm. um, they didn't teach you like how to necessarily like write a story, uh, but it just it gave you the tools. It gave me the tools to learn kind of every aspect of the film industry so that once I got out of college, um, I could I could make my own movies and not necessarily have to like depend on all these other professionals to help me get my my stories made. I just I was able mm -hmm. to do it with my friends and and direct them. So that was kind of the the, the beginning. How and yeah. from then on, I just like I never looked back. Like I've been I I've, I've been chasing the dream of you know yeah yeah films my whole life. So just for for one minute, can I just hear sort of the story? How did Hobo with a Shotgun get involved with Grindhouse? Um, just give us that. Was that something you guys, you heard about, so you made the short specifically for that? Or was it something you guys were just working on anyways? But just maybe just give us that real quick, because I think it's a fascinating story. Oh, cool. Yeah, like, um, well, at the time, uh, there was another contest uh, put out by um, Steven Spielberg. I think it was called, like, On the Lot. It was, like, another show for... It was a show for filmmakers to submit short films and then they would go through these trials of making short more short films on tv so we were thinking about submitting for that and then we saw the posting for the grindhouse competition and john my writing partner uh who also uh he, still to this day we write all our movies together um he told me about the contest and at that point we were just so inspired by exploitation movies and horror like we were into like italian crime movies we were just like going down like a path of uh just getting into like that, that 70s world of uh exploitation films and so it was just the right time for us to like do something mm -hmm. like that and then we just as soon like you had like two weeks i think to get it like from the announcement to delivering it so i think the next day we just went out and started shooting and the idea for Hobo with the Shotgun um, was when we first heard about the contest, we were sitting in uh, this pizza shop called Ronnie's Pizza where we would always go uh, and jam ideas. And uh, outside of that uh, is a street in Dartmouth called Main Street. And it's uh, 
there were like pawn shops and strip clubs and like it was just like this really like intense like area and then we just started envisioning like a heightened world of it and then like i said next day we went out and started shooting and i don't think anything from that day made it into the the trailer but it got the thing the, it just got mm -hmm. it going you know yeah 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 so perfect so i know you're very um short on time so let's dig into your most recent film kids vs aliens maybe to start out um you can just give us a quick picture log line what is this film all about yeah well kids versus aliens is very much based on like my childhood and the experiences me and john had growing up and making movies and it's about a kid named uh gary and his older sister samantha and they make movies in their backyard and then uh samantha's older and some teenagers come into her, her life that she really wants to impress and she is made to feel self-conscious about herself and uh because of that it, cr it creates a rift between her, her and her brother and she gets convinced to have this crazy rager of a halloween party and during the midst of this halloween party aliens attack and try to abduct the kids and uh samantha ends up having to uh, uh become almost kind of like the superhero character and go save her brother um from these aliens that abducted her or mm -hmm. her friends and, and and her younger brother and where what's the genesis of this idea where did this story come from um well it's uh originally it's like based off a short film i made called v uh called summer party alien abduction that was part of an anthology called uh, vhs2 and so that was like the, the 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 spark was to try and make like the feature film version of that short that i made like 10 years ago um, but uh, what got me into it and got me like uh, re-inspired was like a chance to tell uh, a very, like my own like personal story, like the things that Samantha and Gary go through, or things that me and my siblings like did as well. And uh, and then the story of aliens attacking um, uh, is a childhood nightmare that I had, uh, a reoccurring childhood nightmare because in where I'm from in Nova Scotia, there's a great UFO story. Uh, if you look up the story of Shag Harbor in 1967, there was a UFO that crashed. And the opening of my movie pays tribute to that story where a bunch of fishermen saw this UFO crash. Oh. And uh, so that's always been in, in the backyard. And uh, growing up, you know, that really fueled my imagination. You know, uh, one of the things that just struck me, especially with the poster, um, it seems to be sort of homage to these 80s films, kids films. Did you play into that? Um, was that sort of part of the the tone and the feel that you were going for? Yeah, partly. It's like I, I, I wasn't so much inspired necessarily by like 80s kids movies, but I was really inspired by 80s uh, toy lines and the toy lines that I grew up loving, like Masters of the Universe and She-Ra mm -hmm. and Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. And I have spent years, like the past few years, developing on some like properties that were some of my childhood, you know, favorites. Uh, but like it, you know, those never like turned into anything. And you spend like so much time, you know, working on someone else's like IP. Uh, when I came out of it, I was just like, you know, what? I'm going to make my own. Like I want to make my own universe that like I can live in for multiple films. Like I just see Kids vs. Aliens as like the beginning of something mm. that could be so much larger. Um, and so that's what really inspired me was like creating my own idea, my own universe and getting to play mm. in that rather than playing in, in someone else's, you know? Yeah, yeah, for sure. So let's just talk about your collaboration um, with John Davies. Um, how does that work? How do you guys just typically work? It sounds like you go to a pizza place, you spitball ideas. Do you divide up scenes? You write a scene, he writes a scene, then you bring them together. Um, just maybe go walk through your process. What does your collaboration actually work like? Look yeah, like? it's interesting. I remember when uh, John and I were kids because we grew up together. Like I've known him since I was five years old. And I can remember in the fifth grade him coming to me and being like, I'm going to be like a writer. And I thought at the time he's going to write like books and he was writing all these short stories. And then like, I got into like the visual side of like telling stories. And so I feel like that's how our like, I don't know. And partly it's like our, our, our styles like match up good because like he takes over the, he's like in charge of like the writing like process and like, I take over the in charge of like the directing visual style of it. So usually what happens uh, the way we do <laughs> doing it is uh, we just open like a Google doc, like a shared doc and Davies just starts writing. And then I just jump in alongside of him and we're just real time back and forth, just like going through scenes together. And because we've known each other since we were kids, like we can easily like 
you know, shoot down each other's ideas and, mm-hmm. you know, uh, go back and forth on them, like, pretty quickly without there being, like, any egos involved or have to do the dance around, you know, having anxiety about telling somebody you want to, like, change an idea. Mm-hmm. You know, we're just, like, so much of the, like, same brain because we grew up together. Yeah, yeah. And you guys are, when you're doing this Google Doc, are you in the same room or you're just remote? You're on speakerphone and, and watching yeah, the with, computer. With Kids vs. Aliens, uh, I was in Los Angeles and he okay. was in uh, Niagara, uh, Ontario. So mm-hmm. um, we never, I think there was one time during the whole process of developing and writing it that we got to be in a room together <laughs> for mm-hmm. like maybe a day or two. But we what we, we just put on a, like a FaceTime chat. So we're constantly, you know, it feels like we're in the same room. Like mm-hmm. we're doing what you and me are doing here. Like we're just, we're like hanging out and just got the Google, you know, mm-hmm. doc out and we're just jamming on ideas and, you know, sending each other pictures and stuff and just getting inspired. And mm-hmm. um, yeah. What, so, so okay. So once you guys hammered out this draft, you had a script that you like, what were those next stages to actually getting it into production? how did you raise the money? Did you find a producer or production company? Walk us through that a little bit. Yeah. Well, it's interesting. I've had like a different kind of uh, like road to getting my films made. Um, it's never been having like, I always like kind of sell the idea before we dive into uh, writing the script and the same for kids versus aliens. Uh, when we pitched it to RLJE uh, uh, with Mark Ward, he just believed in me like so much. Uh, he just like greenlit it without their, without me having to do the song and dance of making pitch decks and mm-hmm. like, you know, pitch reels and all this stuff. It, it was just like, let's do it. And we wrote the script and we were in development and in production almost within like five months since mm-hmm. the, we like decided yeah, yeah, we're going to do this, you know. Uh, but most of my films and the films I've sold, like, over the years, the studios have been just like been in the room and just like pitching an idea. And it's just like pitching like a, like something, it's usually something that like, whenever I get like, so nervous about like an idea, it always, I always go into the room and it comes across like flat. But when it's something that just really comes from my heart, I don't know, there's something about the energy of it that I, I think mm-hmm. like people uh, are attracted to. So I've been lucky to sell like a few pitches, but uh, I've never like sold a script, like had it wrote, written a script and gone out and, and sold it. It's mm-hmm. always been uh, the pitch first. Yeah, yeah. What sort of I like? What sort of notes um, did he give you? And I and I'm just curious, sort of in the context of like more of a businessy type of a sense. Like when I saw this movie come across my desk as a low budget producer myself, I steer away from movies with a lot of kids, for instance. Yeah. Um, you know, for for <laughs> low budget, it definitely makes it difficult. So, what kind of notes did he give you? Like, what was it that attracted him to this project? What were some of the things that he just really glommed onto that he liked? Yeah, well, Mark Ward, uh, like he, um, like, I think we're like, he's probably a little bit older, but like, he grew up loving like, you know, kids movies from the 80s. And he had always wanted to see like an 80s, uh, or like a kids like R rated like movie. Mm -hmm. And the short film that I made summer party alien abduction, he said that it was like his favorite short amongst all like the VHS film. So that really, I think just like sold him on, Mm -hmm. you know, the vibe that I was gonna, gonna bring to it. Yeah, yeah, for sure. So how can people um, see Kids vs. Aliens? Do you know what the release schedule is going to be like? Yeah, well, it's coming out on January 20th, and it should be like on video, on VOD, like everywhere, and there'll be a, a, like a theatrical um, in the States as well. Okay. Um, so probably like, you know, a few cinemas like spread out over the country. So, uh, but yeah, uh, hopefully we'll soon be posting up the listing. And then, uh, yeah, you can check it out on VOD um, as well, too. Perfect, perfect. And what's the best way for people to keep up with you and your career? Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, anything you're comfortable sharing, I will put in the, the show notes. Yeah, I'm on uh, I'm on Twitter uh, at Jason Eisner, uh, and I'm on Instagram at Jason Eisner. And uh, uh, yeah, I, I post mostly like on my Instagram um, and uh, try to give like a, you know, a cool view into the things that like I'm working on. Perfect. Perfect. Well, Jason, I really appreciate you taking a few minutes to come and talk with me. Good luck with this film and good luck with all your future films as well. Yeah. Thank you so much, Ashley. Take care. Hey, thank you. We'll talk to you later. All right. See ya. Bye. A quick plug for the SYS Screenwriting Analysis Service. It's a really economical way to get a high quality professional evaluation on your screenplay. When you buy our three pack, you get evaluations at just $67 per script for feature films and just $55 for teleplays. 
All the readers have professional experience reading for studios, production companies, contests, and agencies. You can read a short bio on each reader on our website, and you can pick the reader who you think is the best fit for your script. Turnaround time is usually just a few days, but rarely more than a week. The readers will evaluate your script on six key factors, concept, character, structure, marketability, tone, and overall craft, which includes formatting, spelling, and grammar. Every script will get a grade of pass, consider, or recommend, which should help you roughly understand where your script might rank if you were to submit it to a production company or agency. We can provide an analysis on features or television scripts. We also do proofreading without any analysis. We will also look at a treatment or outline and give you the same analysis on it. So if you're looking to vet some of your project ideas, this is a great way to do it. We will also write your logline and synopsis for you. You can add this logline and synopsis writing service to an analysis, or you can simply purchase this service as a standalone product. As a bonus, if your screenplay gets a recommend or a consider from one of our readers, you get to list the screenplay in the SYS Select database, which is a database for producers to find screenplays and a big part of our SYS Select program. Producers are in the database searching for material on a daily basis, so it's another great way to get your material in front of them. As a further bonus, if your script gets a recommend from one of our readers, your screenplay will get included in our monthly best of newsletter. Each month we send out a newsletter that that highlights the best screenplays that have come through our script analysis service. This is monthly newsletter that goes out to our list of over 400 producers who are actively looking for material. So again, this is another great way to get your material out there. So if you want a professional evaluation of your screenplay at a very reasonable price, check out www.sellingyourscreenplay.com slash consultants. Again, that's sellingyourscreenplay.com slash consultants. On the next episode of the podcast, I'm going to be interviewing screenwriter, director, and fitness expert Barry J. Came to Los Angeles in the 80s to be a songwriter, eventually found fitness, founded Barry's Boot Camp, which has grown to over 90 locations. But he always loved horror films, so now that's what he's doing. He's writing and directing horror films, and I have him on next week to talk about his latest film, a drama thriller called The Way Out. So keep an eye out for that episode next week. That's the show. Thank you for listening.